Hi everyone, Paul Levy with Brownells here and today we have another gun from the vault. This one happens to be a special gun. This is a Browning 1919 A4. Uh, this happens to be a semi-auto in 308, uh, so it's not an authentic like World War II uh, USGI uh, gun, but very similar. Uh, of course, the 1919 A4 uh, was derived from the 1917. It's an uh, older water-cooled brother. This one's, of course, an air-cooled machine gun, recoil operated. I'll tear it apart here in a sec so you can see the guts. But this is one of John Browning's uh, genius designs, one of his many. Uh, and of course, this design was also upscaled to be the Browning M2 uh, heavy machine gun. Uh, this one's more uh, general purpose or medium machine gun. Uh, basing this configuration you see right here is what a GI in World War II would have deployed with and had their assistant gunner or their team uh, carry. You have the gun itself, you have the pintle mount, the tripod, and the traverse and elevation mechanism, often called a T&E. Uh, so we'll go ahead and walk you through how it operates. It's a classic gun. It's been in use since 1919, all the way into uh, the 90s and even today in some third world countries. Uh, so to operate it, uh, you, if you want to check first if it's empty, you lift the top cover by simply moving this latch to the rear, flipping it up, and then pulling the bolt to the rear. And then from there, you can inspect the chamber, uh, do anything else you need to do. Uh, to load it, there's a few different mechanisms or methods to load it. You can load it with the top cover closed. Uh, this part actually should pop back in place. You can load it with the top cover closed, take your belt, insert it into the side, and then charge it twice, and that will load around into the chamber. It does fire from a closed bolt, uh, so that's why you have to charge it twice. That first charge pulls the belt over one position, and that second charge pulls the round out of the belt and shoves it down into the chamber. Because, uh, of course, the belt's up here, and then the barrel is below it. Another method to load it is to open it up, place the belt on the feed tray in the far right position, close your top cover, and then go ahead and charge it, and that will also chamber around and you're ready to fire. Both the semi-auto and the full auto versions fire from a closed bolt. Uh, that's an interesting thing with the 1919, uh, when it was introduced and when it was used in World War II, uh, and especially in World War II, is kind of already outdated because it doesn't have a quick change barrel. So firing from a closed bolt, firing a lot of rounds, uh, not the greatest combination, but they may do. Uh, it does fire about 500 rounds per minute. Um, and here at the rear, it is of course a classic machine gun, so it adjusts all the way up to about 2,000 yards. I'll go ahead and quickly disassemble it for you as well so you can see how it functions. I did mention earlier that it's recoil operated, uh, so it has the, uh, takes the energy from the recoil of the 308 or 30 out six round, whatever it's chambered in. But up front, it's actually assisted a little bit by this mechanism up here. This is called the booster. Uh, on the M2 50 caliber, it doesn't have one because there's enough recoil energy. On this, the barrel actually acts as a piston and there's a small gap and those gases are captured to help push the barrel and the rest of the assembly rearward to operate the mechanism. So to disassemble it, like any firearm, you need to clear it. So lift the top cover, check the chamber. And what I'm gonna do is pull the bolt towards the rear I'm going to compress the recoil spring into the bolt itself. So now the recoil spring assembly is actually captured inside the bolt. I no longer have any pressure on the bolt body. Now I can push this latch forward and lift my trigger mechanism up off the rear. And right there I've got my buffer and basically my grip. There's not really a whole lot right there. Now I can remove my bolt. I pull it to the rear. In this position, the charging handle pops out. And now here comes the bolt. And that's really where everything happens. Uh, if you have one of these or you're disassembling one, I would suggest not messing with this. Don't try and turn it and get the spring out. That's a very strong spring under a lot of pressure. That will shoot across any room. I don't care how large it is. Uh, this mechanism right here, this is both your extractor and your ejector. It both pulls the rounds out of the belt and places the rounds back into the barrel and also kicks them out the bottom of the gun. That's your bolt assembly right there. So to remove the rest of the internals, I take my charging handle, insert it into this notch, depress, and simply pull it out the rear. Of course, you have your heavy barrel uh, up front. You can see where that piston area is that's captured in the booster that captures those gases to move this entire assembly to the rear. The entire assembly only moves to the rear about uh, three quarters of an inch, maybe a half inch. 
um, but the bolt itself, of course, travels further to the rear, and the bolt would sit, uh, you know, inside these rails right here. So in order for the bolt to travel further than the rest of this assembly and faster, right here you have these uh, little cams. Uh, so what that does is when they, when this starts traveling towards the rear and these curved pieces actually turn and move faster than the rest of the assembly and shove the bolt towards the root, to the rear. That's called an accelerator. Uh, headspace on the 1919 is done right here. You can simply thread the barrel in and out by lifting this metal piece right here and screwing it in and out. This is an Israeli gun, so this has a square little uh, piece of metal. The American guns were rounded, so you could actually adjust this by hand. So that's the guts of the 1919A4 and the 1919A4 itself. So we'll see you next time when we pull another gun from the vault.